it's what I call interest rate apartheid. If you're not a friend of Goldman Sachs, you live in a Bantustan, you live in a ghetto uh, of high interest rates and you're squeezed and you never get to save any money. But if you're a friend of Goldman Sachs, you get to borrow zero percent, uh, invest in assets and you collectively are buying the same assets. Those go up in price. Then you can use those as collateral to borrow more money and just repeat this over and over again. That's why the wealth and income gap, the wealth gap is so high in America. It's higher now than even during the robber baron era because of this interest rate apartheid engineered by the Fed, condoned by Nancy Pelosi. And uh, this is why Bitcoin is going to, uh, you know, $220,000 in the short term. As you know, we first started covering Bitcoin in 2011 when it was a dollar. And at that time, I was forecasting $100,000 per Bitcoin uh, based on its ability to grab a significant portion of the global Forex market and to compete with gold. Now, as far as 2021 goes, I said, hey, we're going to get to 220000 per coin, which is a typical four-year cycle. Uh, what we had in 2021 was that massive uh, China collapse in mining and hash power. So the mining and the hash power collapsed 50%. Uh, we have since recovered that now, and we're about to hit new all-time high in hash rate. And so that's why I'm pushing my $220,000 target from 2021 to 2022. So there's really a couple of numbers to keep in mind. There's price, there's hash rate, and there's the difficulty adjustment. Those are the three things you have to keep in mind. Uh, I've always said that price uh, lags hash rate, that hash rate precedes price. And so we're gonna see new all-time highs in the hash rate and followed by new all-time highs in Bitcoin price. The underlying fundamentals I've only gotten stronger. The fiat money world is crumbling. Inflation is out of control. Uh, the Bitcoin network is getting stronger. If you look at the on-chain analysis, that is to say the people who are actually doing transactions, not derivatives, but on the actual Bitcoin blockchain, we see an increase in the holdings of Bitcoin. Uh, the recent price action is driven mostly by derivatives. Uh, so the same uh, kind of price discovery you see in the gold market that's kept gold now flat for 10 years and hasn't really budged at all. Um, you know, you start to see some of the derivatives have an influence on the price discovery in Bitcoin. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because the demand for Bitcoin is virtually infinite uh, because fiat money is, as it always does, it's going to go to zero. All fiat money goes to zero. And we'll see that with the U.S. dollar as well. And, I, and, and Bitcoin is now... If you, talk, if, you, if you listen to guys like Bill Miller or Paul Tudor Jones or any of the other major hedge funds out there, they're now openly saying that Bitcoin competes with gold. It's going to get a market share of gold. Gold's market share is about eight, nine, ten trillion dollars. Uh, Bitcoin is going to eclipse that market cap at some point. So all the fundamentals are very strong. Uh, so I'm just bumping my $220,000 target from 2021 to 2022. Um, I've been doing well for the past 10 years since I first recommended Bitcoin at a dollar. So uh, nobody's really complaining. I have no idea who Soloway is. Um, and Novogratz is a hedge fund guy who, who's kind of on a revist who come, came later into the game. I mean, he's a, he's a trader. And for traders who are aggressive traders, uh, that's a different game. You know, I, I'm not really a trader. I'm a holder. I'm a hodler. I, and I don't invest in Bitcoin, I divest out of fiat money and I divest out of gold. And I'd rather be a day early than a day late. Uh, as you see, Jay Powell and the central banks around the world are in panic mode. Uh, they're printing uh, at a level that you'd have to compare to Weimar Germany or Zimbabwe. And they're literally about to torch this economy and the fiat money world down to the ground. So there's only one unconfiscatable, uncensorable money in the world and that's bitcoin and that's that's the fundamental story so you should own it you should own it aggressively if you're a trader and you're looking for trader signals and technical analysis i agree with what peter lynch said about technical analysts um they're 100 correct when looking backwards they're 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 100 correct in predicting the past right i don't know of a single technical analyst billionaire in the world technical analysis is essentially astrology for men Hash rate precedes price. So hash rate is the strength of the network. It adds to the security. It's something that no altcoin or what we call shit coins have, including Ethereum. They are all centralized and they're all vulnerable 
and they don't have any hash rate at all, really. Uh, whereas Bitcoin has most of the hash rate, the overwhelming majority of the hash rate. The hash rate keeps going higher. When countries like El Salvador make Bitcoin legal tender, now my understanding is that several other countries will follow suit and make Bitcoin legal tender as well. Uh, that's another huge fundamental uh, plus for Bitcoin going forward. Uh, the four year cycle, which is tied to the halving that happens every four years, has been a somewhat reliable uh, predictor of price going back to the beginning of Bitcoin. I've lived through three 90% drawdowns in Bitcoin since I first started buying it in 2011. And uh, this particular drawdown is not particularly, particularly worrisome. Um, it's a great buying opportunity. You know, people are always saying, oh, Bitcoin at 75,000 is, or 65,000 is too expensive. You know, I wish it were cheaper. Well, okay, it's cheaper. So you should be backing up the truck, loading the boat aggressively. Uh, only put, you know, only have money in fiat shit coins or gold that you're willing to lose. Any money you have in Bitcoin is unconfiscatable. It's uncensorable. That's your only wealth. That is your only wealth, is your Bitcoin wealth. Everything else is confiscatable or going to be inflated away out of existence. And we'll, and we'll get to gold. You know I always get to gold with you at one point. But sticking to the hash rate, why are you confident we'd see an all-time high in the hash rate this year then? Because uh, the network is growing rapidly and it is already about hitting a new all-time high. So it's, it's flirting with new all-time highs as we speak already in the first few weeks of 2022. So that, should, that trend should continue because uh, more and more miners are coming into the network because mining is a hugely profitable business. Uh, the average miner's cost per Bitcoin is under $8,000 per coin. So at these levels, it's a wildly profitable business. And uh, you're gonna see more and more countries start to mine Bitcoin. Remember I said on your show a few years ago that I was anticipating what I call hash wars or the hash race. So right now you've got El Salvador, who's accumulating Bitcoin. They're doing Bitcoin volcano bonds. And we see a couple of other countries mining Bitcoin and adding Bitcoin to strategic reserves. I think once a country in the G7 starts to accumulate and mine Bitcoin, it'll set off like a space race that we saw in the 60s where the Soviets put up uh, the Sputnik satellite and it launched the space race and a man landing on the moon. I think once a G7 country comes out and says, hey, you know, we're adding Bitcoin to our reserves, we're mining Bitcoin, then you're gonna see other countries say, hey, we gotta get in on this. Uh, the US will come in, the US will come in and start to mine Bitcoin. You've already got a lot of senators in the US right now, like Cynthia Lummis, a third, as I understand her, a third of all of her contributions coming in right now are coming from Bitcoiners. And now we've got many congressmen and senators that are into Bitcoin. We've got governors into Bitcoin. You've got the mayor of Miami. Wyoming is probably going to become a Bitcoin state. Texas could very well secede from the United States and become a Bitcoin state. So this is, this is, this is the power of Bitcoin. It shows you what you can do with unconfiscatable, uncensorable, perfect money. You start to think differently about the world around you and the governments around you. Kaiser also talks about inflation. According to him, inflation is far higher than we have been led to believe, and things will only worsen from here on. It's no secret that inflation is running 15%. If you look at loss of purchasing power, you know, you're talking 15%. You know, it's, it's really galloping out of control. Bitcoin fixes that, though. How? Because it's um, finite supply, and it's got infinite demand, and it's a safe harbor. And that's where people are going to protect themselves against fiat money. You can't print Bitcoin. You can print fiat money. Yeah, gold supply is not uh, fixed either. So it's the go-to commodity. That's why Paul Tudor Jones calls it the fastest horse in the race. Paul Tudor Jones is one of the first people to come out and say, maybe two and a half years ago, that inflation was going to be a problem. And this is when policymakers were saying that they were warning against deflation. Uh, he was saying, no, no, it's actually inflation. It's going to become a problem. That's why I'm buying inflation sensitive assets. And Bitcoin is the fastest horse in the race. And he put 1% of his portfolio into Bitcoin. I believe he's raised that allocation of 5%. Then uh, Michael Saylor, of course, came out and said, hey, 
The monetary energy of the US dollar is depreciating by 15% a year. That's the true inflation number. Your purchasing power is being destroyed by 15% a year. We're buying Bitcoin as our uh, play against inflation. And I must say, heroically, Michael Saylor could have borrowed money from the Fed and bought back their own stock. And he could have made a lot of money doing what Microsoft and Google and Amazon and all those corporations do. They buy back their own stock, which, by the way, it was illegal not too long ago with that ultra low interest rate from the Fed. You see, when the Fed says there's not much inflation, therefore they're gonna keep interest rates low, they're doing that so that insiders can borrow at those ultra cheap rates, buy their own stock, their executive stock options double, triple, quadruple, they cash out and they make a lot of money. But us who are not in on that game, uh, if, if we go on our credit card, it's still 18%, Daniela. Uh, how come my credit card interest rate is still 17, 18% during the last five to 10 years when rates have come down yep. substantially. How come, my credit, how come my Visa MasterCard is not at five or 6%, all right? Because it's what I call interest rate apartheid. If you're not a friend of Goldman Sachs, you live in a Bantustan, you live in a ghetto uh, of high interest rates and you're squeezed and you never get to save any money. But if you're a friend of Goldman Sachs, you get to borrow at 0%. Uh, invest in assets and you collectively are buying the same assets, those go up in price, then you can use those as collateral to borrow more money and just repeat this over and over again. That's why the wealth and income gap, the wealth gap is so high in America. It's higher now than even during the robber baron era because of this interest rate apartheid engineered by the Fed, condoned by Nancy Pelosi. And uh, this is why Bitcoin is going to, uh, you know, $220,000 in the short term. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, $1 million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy, but the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.